After 17 years in prison, 37-year-old Obi Anthony began his life in the free world with a hug and kiss from his fiance. Overturned Anthony's conviction for a murder he says he did not commit. And the judge agreed that Kate identified him, but lied, and a prosecutor who broke the rules. Anthony's road to freedom was paid by volunteers who worked for the caliber of contradictions that led to the reversal of his conviction. Laurie Levinson is the faculty director of the Loyola Law School Project. It's too hard to accept it would be true, because it means that really bad things happen along the way. The Project for the Innocent investigates cases in which we think that uh, an inmate in California State Prison was wrongfully convicted, was innocent, or had a very unfair trial. And in those cases where we feel like that's the case, we will uh, actually investigate and work toward trying to get those people's convictions overturned and get them freed from prison. Seventeen years. Seventeen years I spent in prison on this charge here. Uh, the minute I met Odin, he was so um, he was such a warm guy and so uh, accepting of me. Well, it made it incredibly easy to work on the case because he's just such a lovely guy, and you feel so horrible about the idea that he could be in prison for life uh, for something he didn't do. I took a student from Loyola because the students actually assisted me on the investigation with this case. So one student and I drove down to where he was housed, which was Calipatria State Prison, and I met him in December, right about this time of year. I anticipate what you're going to be like, and he is a wonderful human being and was so appreciative that Loyola Law School had decided to take his case because he, he has maintained his innocence since the day he was arrested. And he said, I always knew that I would get relief from this. I just didn't know when and how. But he felt like now something's going to finally happen in my favor and maybe I'll be able to get out one day. First time I met him, he was sitting on the other side of a you know, bulletproof glass. He was sitting in his lockup, prison garb, handcuffs, and I just grilled him. I said, if you're lying to me, I'm going to kill you, you know? And, I, and he will tell you, I really went to it. And I don't really think I established a relationship with him until after the case was over. Tell you the truth, right? Tell you the truth, it was just, uh, I, was, I was excited about my, when I met him, because it was like, for me, it was like, this is, for me, this, is, this was help, you know what I mean? And so uh, it's almost like being a, a drowning victim in the middle of the water and you just, the rescue diver dives in. So when you see him, it's like, man, relief, help. And uh, the first time I sat in front of him, he was, uh, he was in, out down in the man at the courthouse. She came back there and came back there in the um, holding tank, closed the door. How you doing, Obi? Sit down. Um, do you know John Jones? Straight to it. <laughs> no, I do not. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Do you know John Jones? <laughs> How likely do we think this situation is? I mean, one part that we're leaving out, right, one part we're leaving out is that the gun also wouldn't be like this. You'd literally have to be positioning it at an actual 40 degree angle to be making the shot. It would be in his line of sight. He also would not plausibly be this close to someone and this person not know what's going on, right? Sorry? Why is that? Well, you can, you can sense someone who's behind you. Probably the entry wound, I mean, these are, this is where your mind can go. You, you create scenarios. So if I'm standing behind you, you can feel there's a presence behind you, right? Probably would turn around. There would be a, sh there would be a sound in cocking the gun, right? You would probably turn around upon hearing that. So even if he did shoot this, the entry wound would not go perfectly through the back, come out the front, 
be a clean, you know, entry and exit because I don't, I mean, it's, it's pitch black. It's nighttime. So sure you can't see the person, but you can hear them. It is known that you would have a heightened sense of awareness in terms of hearing, you know, your senses, basically your eyes, you can't rely on them as much. So you're relying on your ears. Basically what I'm trying to say is, is someone is making a sound of cocking a gun behind you or even breathing behind you, there's gonna be some turnaround. That is not what the evidence demonstrates. There was a clean shot. Basically it seems like he has no idea where this shot came from, completely out of the blue. Yes? So are you saying that therefore this 18 inches, which is the minimum distance, is an is implausible really distance. An implausible distance and you would have to be further away. You would have to and be if further you away. Were further away, what then would happen? So the further away you get, the higher the gun has to be above your head because as the math shows you start getting into the seven foot range this guy was not seven feet tall i believe he was five seven five eight somewhere in that range <laughs> well, now that I know what the best job is, no. <laughs> no, he didn't. Imagine being stuck in quicksand, here come an individual throwing a rope in the water and pulling you out. That relieving feeling that you know, okay, the rope is in the, in the sand now, I know I'm finna get out. And so uh, that's what it was like for me when I, when, when I came along. Well, that's been the best part, actually. Yeah. You know, a free OB is an even better OB. <laughs> you know, frankly, from the minute you walked out of jail, and there were lots of hugs. It was a hug fest. Um, and then just staying in touch and seeing you get your life back together, um, your job. And then I want to say, OB was kind enough to come to my daughter's bat mitzvah. So that yeah. was really nice. Was my that first your first bat mitzvah? Yeah, my first one. I said, listen, when I thought about it, I said, I can. I can. Can I have one? <laughs> no, can I, can I have a bar and, and so you go from a, a client to a really dear friend. So, uh, but if, for me, it's been a, it's been a good experience because again, it's uh, they, it's like uh, having continual help. Like they've helped me, they helped me get a job. They helped, you know, again, it was because of one of the students that was, that was in, that was Brooke, in Brooke. Brooke Levin from Harvard Wesley. Yeah, Brooke. Uh, because of Brooke, uh, I was, I'm, I'm working. You know what I mean? And so. Uh, is help helping help. So they help me, she helped them help me, and so now I'm in a position where I can then put myself in a situation where I can help someone else. And so it's just about continuing that cycle. And the only way I can be able to do that, I have to be in a chain, I have to be in a line of, with that happening.